First day in America, and we're in federal custody. Joe bailed us out, but the DA wanted to throw the book at Barry. And then, after all these years, we were back in a hut and quickly regressed into infantile behaviour. The medicine man blessed the ground, they gave us an honour dance, and we started. We loved this place, although Barry was still stressed by the drug bust. And the local rednecks didn't like us being there. Oh yeah. But our biggest problem was getting steel workers. We went to Vegas to talk to them. And it was Oz's finest hour. It wasn't Neville's. He got hung up on a tart who worked in a chicken ranch. And young Wyman disappeared. a search party, Billy, with flashlights and flares. Call the highway patrol in St. Clair, see if they'll lend us a chopper. Okay, Joe, I'll get right on it. Okay. Later, Joe. I reckon he must be concussed. Otherwise, why didn't he just walk straight back onto the road? Be dark soon, poor sod. Oh, Rattlers won't be a problem. Why? Oh, Rattlers sleep at night. I like the sunshine. It's one less thing for Wyman to worry about. That's what I'm saying. Now, thank you very much, sir. You come back again real soon. Thank you, ma'am. Listen, is your friend that nervous-looking guy? Talks funny like you? Aye, that's him. He won't be long. Trust me. You come back for what you didn't get this morning? Yeah. So where have you been since I saw you last? Vegas. Did you win big? Is that what did the trick? No. I don't gamble. I just want you. Yeah? Oh. You better zip it up, cowboy. Buddy says it's an emergency. That's all we know. Police are out searching for him now. Your phone was in your pocket, by the way. What? Your phone was in your pocket where it always was. What sort of an excuse was that? I think I left it in there. I mean, if you're gonna have a shag, lie down and enjoy it, man. How quick were you gonna do it with me and him sat up there in the car park? Shut up, pause. In, out, bosh. Hardly time for the talk to wash your knob. <laughs> well, maybe that's all he wanted. <laughs> ah, piece off the pair of you. <laughs> Dirty, dirty boy. Oh, hey, you'd have thought they could do better than this, Bob. I mean, they're Indians, aren't they? Should have found a sport or something by now. In the movies, maybe. These people live in houses. They break trucks. Half of them works as croupiers in a casino. Yeah, but even so, you'd have thought they'd have had ingrained native skills. Yeah, it's all chain you, daft tosser. They don't hunt bison for their supper either. They go to Burger King. What's happening? Where is everybody? They're heading back. I called the search off till dawn. Well, what have you been doing? Have you just been sat there stuffing your face? Just a little snack. A very stressful day, Frank, yeah? Stressful for Wyman? Mate, too, you must know. The lawyer's been on the phone from Phoenix. You lot are off the hook. There are no charges to be bought, etc., etc. Oh, brilliant. That's one to chalk up in the wind column. Yeah, it's all right for some, isn't it? I'm going to take a polygraph test. Well, that's fantastic, man. You're innocent. Be a piece of piss. They're not foolproof, Dennis. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. Don't be nervous. 
You can say things you don't mean. You can think things you don't mean. I tell you, as innocent men on death row because they flunked a polygraph test. I've never any good at exams at school. Shit. I wouldn't want to be out there. Simon? Are you all right? I don't know. Keep still. Can you open your mouth? A little bit? Just a little bit? How many fingers? It's three. Three? Mm-hmm. Near enough. He's okay. He's got a mild concussion and he's a bit dehydrated. The doctors are with him right now. Just give him a minute, okay? Yeah. Thanks. 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 Thanks, okay. Thanks, Jeff. So, no one knows what happened. No. Maybe he was abducted by aliens. What? Well, you know, this neck of the woods. Arizona, New Mexico, UFO Central, isn't it? Oh, how do we end bollocks, man? It came in the night. A great blinking fluorescent machine, like an ELO album cover, sucked him up into the galaxy where one-eyed men probed and prodded him, taking samples of his vital fluids. Where does he get it from? Huh? Roxy, yeah, sure to. Are you feeling okay? Okay, I'll see you in a couple of hours. Okay. How many fingers? <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah. I'm alright. So, what happened exactly? Some lunatics followed me from town, started rear-ending me. What, ran you off the road? Yeah, don't remember much more than that. So how'd you find me? Tracking tricks I picked up off the Indians. A footprint here. A snag thread there. A broken twig. And then I heard the guitar riff and... Yeah. Ah, I told you, didn't I? Thanks, yeah. That's all right. No, I'm, I'm sorry about what I said the other night. What was that? In the hut. You know what I said about you and Rod? Oh, forget it. Whatever it was, I'm sure you were right. <laughs> Get well soon, kid, eh? We need you back on the site as soon as possible. Okay, take it away!
So, my son is coming back to where he swore he'd never return. Yep. Did he talk about me? Well, we could tell there was some history between you, but that's none of our business. I was a hard father and a bad drunk. But it's not just me, it's this place the young don't want to know. Well, he's coming back to you and he's bringing the whole team. The rest of the bridge, Dr. Garveston last night, be here in three days. So we're steaming, we're nearly there. You're good people. I knew that when I first met you. Well, feelings mutual. <laughs> Does a beer ever taste any better than that, eh? After a long day's graft. Good up. Where's Nev? He's over at that Nevada knocking shop again. He was over there on Sunday and all. Well, you don't know that, Oz. Eh? I do, actually, Dennis. I gassed the van up on Saturday, right? Takes 18 gallons to fill the tank. There's 25 to the gallon on an open road. That means it's good for about 450 miles. Neville borrowed it on Sunday. When he brought it back, there was just over half a tank left, which means about 200 miles gone. Do the sums. <laughs> he had his yag. You're yeah, right, old Hercule Parrots, aren't you? Yeah. What's the women like over there? Oh, he only sees the one, man. You know, Neville. Probably takes a, a bunch of flowers and a box of black magic. <laughs> I've never been to a brothel. Never really needed to. I know what you mean, kids. I mean, why pay for it when... When what, Moxie? When women are all over you like a pack of Chinese monkeys? <laughs> hey, I've had me share, you know. <laughs> all the time I've known you, I've never seen you with a woman. It's because I'm discreet. They appreciate that. All right, Barry. Oh, it's, uh, it's a beer somewhere. You doing overtime, Barry? Uh, no, cheers, bum. I've been going through the shipping inventory. I thought I made a mistake at first, so I checked and I double-checked. And there is a discrepancy, lads. You are? What do you mean, a discrepancy? Discrepancy where? Between what we left on the site at Middlesbrough and what arrived here. Well, maybe it's still at Galveston? Uh, I've been on the blow and it's not, Den. Now, look, we catalogued and colour-coded each section, right? Yeah. Well, numbers 1 through to 54 ain't there, and they never came through US Customs. 1 to 54? Well, that's the first stuff we took down. That's right. That'd be the cradle. The cradle? It's missing. This is Jeffrey Granger. Sorry, I'm not available. Please leave a message. Hello, Jeffrey. This is Oz. We need to talk, you and me. Oz, what a pleasure. Let me just turn down the CD. They've asked me to go on Desert Island Discs. <laughs> Cast away of the week, no less. That's my uh, Mozart pick playing in the background. Hang on. The Elvira Madigan Piano Concerto, and then I thought perhaps a little Billy Holiday, you know, just to show an eclectic ah. range. Any thoughts? How's about Lion Eyes by the Eagles, you devious bastard? Devious. If we're talking devious, what about that little prank you and your cronies pulled? We made a deal on the understanding that the bridge was going for scrap. Not the case, was it? Or you wouldn't be ringing me from oh. Arizona or something, could have got the second place. Look, never mind that. A bit of our bridge is missing. Eh, yeah, Jeffrey? And I think you probably know where it is. Couldn't possibly comment. Shall we cut to the chase? How much money do you want? Couldn't possibly comment on that either. Best if we have sat down, face to face, had a drink, we talked it over. But I'm 6,000 bastard miles away, man. It's only a 10 hour flight. Rack up a few frequent flyer miles. What's your favourite Beatles record? I ought to have one. Though so in truth, I always preferred the Kings.
Maybe not the best idea, Oz. Well, I mean, if you lose your temper, you're going to end up ripping his head off, aren't you? It's not going to help, is it? But a tact and diplomacy is required on this. Well, sure, I can do tactful. I can do diplomatic. It's not just that Chip's here because of you, not his dad. He can't piss off when he's just arrived. Barry's the one that's wined and dined him. He speaks his language. I can't go. I'm on bail. Didn't have me passport. I'll be off like a shot. You'll never be allowed back in again. Like Roman Polanski. Uh, Roman Polanski's life isn't so arduous. Lives in Paris, married to a woman half his age, long lunches in Boulevard Brasseries. I'll have a slice of that, Mercy Bucco. Yeah, if we can just drag you back to the subject in hand, I think Nev should go. Oh, sorry. Me? Well, good idea. Don't you think I'll give him a chance to see Brenda and the girls? Huh? Well, I'll get him away from the chicken ranch, tell what you mean. I good idea. What did you say? Well, you have been having flits across the border, haven't you, Nev? Oh, hi, well, Kellyanne's a very canny girl. Ah, oh, but she's a tart. She's got a bairn of her own. She's a hooker. Oh, shut your face, Oz. Oh, my Neville, it's no good trying to sugarcoat it, man. That's what she does. That's what she is. She's a whore. A harlot. A scrubber. A flatbacker. Thank you, Moxie. It's none of your sodden business, Oz, right? She's a prostitute, Nev. She's not Julia Roberts and pretty woman. Nobody ever was. All right, Oz, knock it off. Well, I'm just agreeing with you. Just leave it, eh? Oh. With all due respect to Neville, bloke like Granger run rings round him. Well? Can't see where this is heading. I'll help you pack. What's that? Ah! Uh. <laughs> When I look around, I keep picturing my dad in the hut with you. <laughs> he was more out than in, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <sighs> well, anyway, sleep well. Oh, <laughs> I don't sleep, Wayne. Not since the arrest. Uh... You were snoring something savage last night. Oh, must have been a fitful doze. <laughs> Your dad was everything that I wasn't. He was the bee's knees. A great bloke. Thanks, mate. When you lot left, the rest of the steel was left sitting here for six days. Aye, but your company was responsible for its security. Right. Well, how stringent was it? Well, we weren't too worried about kids from the council estate running off with a 20-ton girder. Listen, the cradle disappeared. That meant trucks, a crane, manpower. How could something like that go unnoticed? Someone must have signed for something. Look, the blokes who nicked it wouldn't leave a paper trail. Somebody's turned a blind eye here for a bung. I don't like your choice of words, Mr. Patterson. Bollocks! Can I have a glass of water, please? This is Agent Mathis. This polygraph test is being conducted in the presence of Agent Gerber. Subject, Barry Spencer Taylor. Foreign National. Indictment reference, hash mark 21412. 
It's a bit like that film, this, isn't it? What film's that, Mr. Taylor? The one with Robert De Niro and Ben um, uh, Stiller or Affleck. Or, um, I always get confused there. Too. I didn't see it. Oh, right, unless you get the video, it's, it's really it's, it's, it's funny. You seem to be perspiring, Mr. Taylor. Am I? Get him a tissue, Brad. Okay, no trick to this, just gonna ask you some simple questions. Your name is Barry Taylor? Yes. You're 42 years of age? Well, I've thought about lying about that on occasion. <laughs> yes or no, Mr. Taylor? Yes, sorry. You were born in Birmingham? Uh, Birmingham, we say, yes. And you're managing director of your own company? Well, if it's still there, yeah. <laughs> I left it in the hands of six uh, half a dozen, um, what's they, what they call them, the, the blokes to drive the uh, forklift things, uh, truckers, yeah, sorry, yes, I, that's all right. Ever taken drugs, Mr. No. Well, I, can I, can I qualify that? Um, when I say, no, I mean, I, well, I, 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 I have had the occasional line of Charlie during a party, you know, and, um, but, uh, well, haven't we all? <laughs> Oh yes, and there were. I did um, have a toke on a on a spliff at the Reading Rock Festival, but I'd hardly say I was a regular user. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. If you'd called earlier, Dennis, I would have made you dinner at the house. No, don't worry, Pitt. I'm getting the eight o'clock at King's Cross. I'm meeting Granger in the morning. He's behind it, isn't he? Well, who else would want a cradle from the transporter bridge, eh? Souvenir hunters. <laughs> I doubt it. They want money. At least that makes it simple. Look, I came into this with a note. It's harder for you and Nev. I mean, you've put your business at risk. It was me who pushed him into it, Dennis. Well, Nev's the sort of bloke needs a shove note again, eh? <laughs> I've been asking myself that. Did I push too hard? It can't be easy for him, Dennis. Living in a house with four women, he's bound to feel sidelined most of the time. Well, he's in a hook with six hairy horse blokes now. <laughs> We've been having our problems recently. Did you know? Not really, no. I'm talking about bed. It's not sexual. It's more psychological. You don't like talking about these things, do you, Dennis? Look, you know, I mean, I know being open is the modern way, but it's not my way, you know. Too long in the tooth to change. It's not Neville's either. Does he talk to the lads about it? Not about things like this, no. That's the difference between the sexes. Women get together to discuss their problems. Men get together to forget them. Well, I'd hate to think you two couldn't work through this. You're the only couple that's still married out of all of us. they first realised they were good at them. I mean, there weren't any high-rises when Buffalo roams the plains, were they? Started with the Mohawks up in the northeast. What, Newcastle? I thought they were the magpies. <sighs> northeast of America, you planet. They came down to New York looking for work. They're in an affinity for the most dangerous jobs. No fear of hype. You're becoming a race expert on Indian folklore, aren't you, Bomb? It's natural, isn't it? Come to a strange place, absorb the culture. Oh yeah, when we were in Germany, I don't remember you boning up on Beethoven. You're seeing that lady, innit? That'll be what it is. <laughs> well, what if it is? She's a good woman, and she's making dinner for Bomber Saturday night. I think, um, I think grapefruit juice today, Wendy. And, uh, and my usual. And for you, sir? Uh, I'll have orange juice, please. Um, a couple of boiled eggs, brown bread, tea. Thank you. Sorry, but... I'm surprised Oz didn't come over. He and I have always had an understanding. Well, he's needed where he is, you know. My PA, Sarah, is disappointed. She seems to have a soft spot for him, probably bunking behind my back. <laughs> but then quite a few things happened behind my back. You screwed us on the bridge. We made our own deal and we redressed the balance. Mm, I have a feeling you did rather better than that. Well, what we're making up front isn't making any of us rich. Up front? Ugh. 
That implies a back end. Yeah. Well, I've never found back end deals an attractive incentive. They tend to disappear with the morning dew. Much like the one you offered us. Precisely. No, you'll have to do better than this. I am, after all, the hand that rocks the cradle. <laughs> OK. Look, we're getting a cut of the take from the casino. Casino? What's it got to do with a casino? That's the whole point of the bridge, so the punters can get in there faster. My God. Well, this puts a whole new complexion on it. The Mafia aren't involved, are they? Or the Russians? No, just the Chokinos. That's an Indian nation. Oh, it's good to see him out here. I have such a hard time getting away from that computer. If it hadn't been for him and the computer, I wouldn't be here. Now, every day I thank God and the angels for my blessings. Are you a religious man? Oh, more so since I got sick. We're gonna fix that. The doctors can't. The doctors don't know what we know. They do not have our traditional herbal remedies. You mean the stuff that medicine man carries in his pouch? <laughs> don't laugh. We're gonna make you well. But, um, you might have to stay for a while. Raindrops is falling on me head. <laughs> Just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed. Nothing seems to fit. Those raindrops. Put your sun dance, is it? Yeah? All you have to do is uproot ground men from their natural soil and they regress into childhood. Oh, lighten up, man, buddy, for goodness sake. Oh, <laughs> lighten up, all right. Haven't heard a word about the polygraph. That's Tommy Strike's wife had pass. But if you'd failed it, they would have hauled your horse back in there by now, wouldn't they? So stop brooding. Anyway, some exercise wouldn't do you any harm. You wouldn't get me on a bike. It's the last form of exercise I'd take. Cycling damage you to sexual organs. Bollocks. Precisely. No, I read this, I read this research report. Right, they, they use ultrasound scans to examine the testicles of 45 mountain bikers, and they compared them with 39 sets of testicles of non-riders. And all but two of the cyclists had scrotal abnormalities. He knows a lot of stuff, does Barry? Aye. All of it useless. Yeah. We're on that London LA flight, Virgin. Aye. <laughs> oh, I saw you. Bloody long haul, eh? Oh, it's a killer. We both end up here, eh? Small world. Yeah. You on holiday? Not really, no. I'm hoping to take a few days off, though. I have to see Grand Canyon now I've come this far. How about yourself? Working, putting the bridge up. Not the bloody transporter bridge. Yeah. <laughs> That's from my neck of the woods, is that? <laughs> is it far? It's a couple of hours dry. I yeah. have to pop over and take a look. Here we are. Andy, by the way. Andy Hadley. Take a spot, sir. He's a copper. What he told you? I didn't have to, man. Copper's feet, copper's haircut, all the wrong clothes for the climate, and he's from Teesside, where they found the body. Well, if you told him you were working on the bridge... Yes? Yeah. How come he never asked you about Moxie, huh? Well, he wouldn't, would he, in case I tipped him off? Look, at the end of the day, that's Moxie's problem. Grange as ours. If we have to rewrite our deal to accommodate this bastard, we're going to end up without anything again. After all we've been through, for sodden nothing. I don't believe it, man. We might as well pack it all in now and get ourselves off home. Oh, aye. We walk away now, what's left behind, eh? A half-finished McCormano set across a gorge. You think the tourists are gonna flock to see that, Lee? Yeah, Dan's right. All Joe's hopes will be crushed in the dust. What do you think, Oz? What do I think? If Granger wants a piece of the casino pie, 
He's got to come out here, hasn't he? Deal with the tribal council and the American lawyers. So we get to see his ugly face again? No, he won't like that. It's not a gourmet restaurant in 500 miles. <laughs> no. What's your point, Oz? My point is this, then. We get him out here, right? Do the deal. And once we're not certain that the cradle's on its way out here, then... <laughs> well, then, anything could happen, couldn't it? Huh? I mean, 6,000 square miles of rock and bloody cactus. A bloke would very easily disappear in that lot. Yeah. I mean, look at Wyman. It was a miracle I found him. Well, this gorge could come in handy, couldn't it? I mean, we bring him out here for a picnic. Glass of chilled rosé. Then, whoops! <laughs> I wasn't joking, Moxie. Well, I was. Are you start riven mad or what? Exactly. Look, that's a lane we're not going to cross us. Oh, well, shite! Piss and Ah! It just does a body good to think about it, that's all, Den, after what he's done to us. But it's not just about us anymore, man. Or the money. Was it not? No, it's about the chock and hose. We don't finish building this bridge, the casino dies. And the hopes of the nation goes with it. But get Granger out here, we'll do what needs to be done. So you're coming out to my idea? No. We'll settle with Granger, whatever it takes. Oh, man, but Den, man... Dennis is the gaffer. We'll do as he says. <sighs> Hey, Bon, you remember in the bar when you were talking about that medicine man? Yeah. How he can change things, like... Shapeshift, they call it. Yeah. Change your deer into a dog, for instance. Oh, they believe so. I was thinking about having a word with him. Is it expensive? Oh, what are you talking about, you daft bugger? Well, Den's told me that there's a cop out here looking for me. So I fancy a bit of shapeshifting. Just till he goes home, like. Come on, anything permanent. Well, if you come back as a dog, Mox, you get fed once a day and you sleep outside the hood, right? We're not having fleas in here. Is this the cover? What it? A scorcher, eh? Never realised you brought me shorts. Uh, now, I never properly introduced myself yesterday. I'm uh, Andy Haley, Detective Inspector, Cleveland Regional Crime Squad. Oh, this is a sight for sore eyes, isn't it? Do you mind if I take a few pictures? No, oh, for your feet. A lot of interest in this back home, you know. What's the point of it, if you don't mind me asking? What's the point of your asking? If you don't mind me asking? Want a word with one of your lads, Albert Moxie? Is he about? I haven't seen him about. No, I haven't seen him, like. Yeah. Is there anywhere we could talk? Now this heat. In there. Now, according to the Liverpool police, a local thug, Mickey Startup, sent this bloke, Platt, to find your pal. I've seen him on the site. Nasty bit of work. Oh, aye. Wouldn't win any points at charm school. A hitman, according to the file. Well, we're in this pub and Moxie went for a slash. This bloke was waiting for him and he gave Moxie a good kicking in the car park. And then what? And then I found Moxie bleeding in the car park and he didn't know where he was. You took him back to our motel and he was in no shape to go after Platt again. That's what you're thinking. Ah, he's not the type anyway, Moxie, is he? Huh? Why no? I mean, he's never going to be first fly on the dog tour if you get me drift. <laughs> he's a bit of a glebe, but he's harmless, isn't he? Aye. Then why is he not here? He's not doing himself any favours, is he? No. Um, Inspector, uh, excuse me. Uh, I, I never introduced myself. <laughs> the name's Barry. Uh, ba ba Barry Taylor. All right, Barry. I'm in a bit of bother. Drug smuggling. I, I, it, it was a plant. A malicious act of revenge. I mean, I ask you, do I, do I look like a drug zoo? <laughs> you don't exactly fit the profile, no. Couldn't you arrest me? I'll be a much bigger feather than your captain, daft old Moxie. I, I'd need a warrant, Barry. Uh, an extradition order. It won't faxed over. I mean, look, the coke originated in the UK. I mean, that gives you a reason. Well, the Yanks might not see it that way. It's pretty worth a try. I'm so, sorry. Sorry. Believe me. 
porridge and wormwood scrubs is infinitely more desirable than some terrible American penitentiary filled with tattooed bikers and Mexican mafiosi in hairnets. All right, all right. I'll, I'll look into it. OK. You have to change terminals in L.A. If you miss your connection, there are flights to Vegas every hour. I booked you in at the Venetian for three nights. Mm. Concierge will arrange a car. It's about a three-hour drive to the reservation. Well, I don't intend to linger in Indian country. White man much prefer Las Vegas with its numerous delights. I'm sure you'll sample all of them. Anything you'd like me to take? A little gift for the virile Oz? Something in aspect from Fortnum's, or is he strictly a pork pie man? Why are you doing this to them? Doing what? Screwing them. Just ordinary blokes trying to get ahead. They tried to put one over on me. Don't like that. There's a principle involved. You don't have any principles, Geoffrey. You're a conceited, narcissistic phony and a total shit. I'm going to fire you for that remark. I've already quit. This cheque you just signed was for two months' severance pay. Hope you get an arrow in your back. That crow was there when we left for work. So? You reckon it's Moxie? Is that you, Mox? <laughs> I've got an idea for when Granger gets here. We'll not kill him. I've accepted that. But we can still stitch him up. How? Blackmail. You've got Polaroids of you and him in prison. <laughs> We're gonna take some new ones, Nev. Or better still, a video. We're gonna set a honey trap, lads. Get Granger in a sexually compromising position. Well, how are we gonna do that? Well, Nev's got a fantastic in at the brothel, hasn't he? He's almost got a season ticket doing there. So we'll get his lass, Kellyanne, to set it up, right? Get Granger in a bubble bath with two or three toads doing unspeakables to him. Every chance you get, you drag a name into the conversation, don't you? Just so you can slag her off. Why don't you keep your face out of my life? Well, I still think it's a canny idea. There you go, pal. <sighs> the longer we live in this hut, the more the old Oz rules. <laughs> I thought we'd buried them. Mind you, you know, it's no secret what you does, you know, Nevin. Well, it's a cause for concern, Lee. Why? Well, I mean, even if she wasn't, you know, what she is. I mean, you're a married man with kids. And... I was just talking to your Brenda a couple of days ago. Did you say anything? Way not, of course not, dummy daft man. She said a bit, though. A bit more than I wanted to hear, to be honest with you. Like what? Well, just about the pair of you, you know, and problems. And... She blames herself a lot, Lee. She does, how? Well, pressuring you and pushing you, trying to change you, making you into someone you're not. Sometimes I wish I was something I'm not. I think that's been the appeal of Kellyanne. Surprised myself as much as you lot. See, I thought me problems were about sex. So when we come out here, on me Todd, foot loose, fancy free, mm. I was dead set on getting some. Well, first time it never happened. Second time it would have happened, but you buzzed us about Wyman. Yeah. And since? Since it hasn't happened either. I've just seen her on her days off. The movies. Bowling alley. What does this tell you? I'm an idiot. 
No. Means you're thinking about your Brenda, man. Aye. Because you know something. If I had had a shark, I'd have had to tell her. Your problems are more psychological than sexual. Oh, that's pretty shrewd, Dad. No, I didn't say that. That was your lass. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Moxie obviously agrees. <laughs> Aye. Shape shift, Moxie. <laughs> <laughs> This is the bastard that ran me off the road. Yeah. Well, you might have had a bit of luck. <laughs> oh, I could change. <laughs> English police have arrested your brother-in-law. Cardi, is it? Caddy? Yeah. Spoke to the arresting officer. They're throwing the book at him. His best chance of a reduced sentence is a plea of guilty, which means fessing up to everything. What? Well, including planting the coke and that? <laughs> so keep your fingers crossed. I'll send the file to the feds and a copy to your lawyer. <laughs> this is difficult. This is, is Boston. Andy, I know you come up trumps. Oh, you might sound like Freddie Truman, but there's definitely a bit of Columbo in you, isn't there? <laughs> I minus a tatty man. Oh, you lovely man. I love you. <laughs> Is the owner of a silver GMC pickup in the room? What the hell is it to you? Oh, pig fart. Oh, I think you know what the hell it's to us. You know what you did to this lad, don't you? Huh? You've all I killed him. Take it outside. There's no problem, Colleen. Oh, dear. We'll let the local police sort this one out. Absolutely. Your bar will be a much nicer place with these two dickheads back. No. <laughs> I'll give you a what? Hang on, Dan, hang on. Sorry. Easy, lad. Go again. I'm calling the cops. No, I am one, love. What the hell are you doing with your bracelets over here? It's meant for your mate Moxie. I can think of one slippery bastard that would fit better. Sorry, Dawn. I'm not here, right? Uh, I, I think the baby's coming. Not just yet, love, all right. I mean, ten minutes won't make any difference, will it? How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm told you're the oldest man in this nation. Marvellous, that is. I've got an aunt in Scarborough's 86. Slip of a girl compared to you. Do you think he might have had me picture took with him? She's going to have a baby and her sister's at the store and I don't know the number of the medical centre. Right, right. Oz. Jumpers. How are we? We're champion. How are we? Um, no hard feelings, I hope. Not nursing anything in the grudge bank. No, yeah, of course not. Business is business, isn't it, Jumpers? Oh, well, I'll introduce you to the troops. Ah. This is Dennis, who you've already Hello. met. And this is Laney Proudfoot of the Tribal Council. Nice to meet you. Hello. And this is Joe Sorgus. He's like the top kiddie in all of this. Ah, the man I should be talking to then. Welcome. 
Dennis, shall we? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Come on, let's go through, eh? Ooh. Somebody's having a baby, so you'll have to excuse me. Right up. I'll catch up with you guys later. All right. Ready. Turn up, Pip. Now, now, now. You've got any quarters, chaps? I, I didn't bring any change. Aye. Ah, oh, there you go. Lovely. Thank you. Here we go. Our attorneys redrafted the agreement we had with Bridge North to accommodate yourself. Paperwork is in my office. Excellent. I should be back in Vegas in time for cocktails. No, 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 no. You are our guest and our new partner. There's a way we celebrate these things. There is. Yes. Aye. It's called an honor dance. Hey, 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 big deal. Ah, let me get you some refreshments. Thank you. What, what is it? Some sort of Indian thing? Is it war whoops and tomahawks? Yeah, hey, wouldn't do to offend them, like. Young virgins brought to my teepee at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> you never know your look. Oh. Ah. <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> you got that change, woman. Dennis, don't be so petty. You were great in there. I was bloody useless. <laughs> I've had some practice. Help with our youngest. Get away. Uh, well, I couldn't make it to the hospital, so... This is our key. 16 months now. Big lads, eh? Just like his dad. <laughs> yeah, look at them rugby league calves, eh? Oh, hi, yeah. <laughs> so, Albert, what are you doing up here? Just trying to keep out of your way. How'd you find me? Ah, you need a roof over your head in this heat. You've got no jurisdiction here, you know. They're their own nation. You can't force me to go back if I don't want to go. You've no reason to. I got the old story from the rest of the lads. <sighs> Hey, what about the Liverpool police? <laughs> they love you. You what? You gave all that stuff that nailed Mickey's start up. Oh. oh, that's great. Oh, that is a relief. And they can't prove I took any cash. Which I didn't. Well, I might have. But it all went to a good cause. I'm oh, sure it did. We should get back. But if we do later... You're the guest of honour. since our incarceration. Well, it wasn't deep to knock them back, Jeffy. Anyway, sorry, it's, it's horrible. Get yourself a good, good hit on that. How's that? Good? Good. Hmm. Surprisingly mellow. Huh? When men smoke pipe, it means there'll be no lies between them. Oh, absolutely. Remember, different inhale. Oh, 
another wallop of that, Jeffy. Go on. There you go. Hey. Hey. Nip, nip. Feel the spirits of our ancestors, Jeffrey. Boy, I can certainly feel something, that's for sure. <laughs> Actually, I'm absolutely ravenous. We have prepared food. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Before you took it, no. and now that we're all partners again, yeah. how did you do it? Do what? <laughs> yeah, do yeah. what? <laughs> you know what? Pinch the bloody cradle up the bridge. Yeah. Come here, Jeff. <laughs> how, are you? how did you do it? There it was. Just sitting on the dock. A couple of dozy security cards. Drop them if you could to look the other, other way. Oh. Oh, this is so good. Traditional dish, is it? That's black bean dip from the supermarket. Mm. What, you stole it? In broad daylight? Just like that? Kind of hand it to you, Jeffrey. Well, I didn't physically remove it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> 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 No, I'm not one to roll the old sleeves up. I leave all the heavy lifting in the chaps out here. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, yeah. uh, so, uh, who lifted it for you, Geoffrey? Ah, the cradle up the bridge. Oh, that piss artist. Calhoun. Ah. And a couple of his comrades. <laughs> mm. Mr. Tate and some balls, so, eh? Nick and something mm. outside. Stakes were high, and you got to, got to pay a bold hand. I know, but if you had been captured, Jeffrey, I mean, <laughs> you would have been facing some serious charges, eh? You know? Aye, aye, you aye. got trespass, hijack, <laughs> bribery, extortion. I mean, I must have taken nerves of steel. Uh, he had the nerve, and he took the steel. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, had to show you buggers I'm in business. <laughs> but you're still on probation from your previous convictions as well, aren't you? What do you want to bring that up for now? Because I want to know a new friend to hear all this. Can I introduce you to Detective Inspector Haley? Hello. All right. Now, the funny thing is, I'm from Middlesbrough, so all your admitted crimes are on my badge. Admitted crime? I, I admit nothing. Oh, oh, but you did, Mr. Granger. <laughs> You're coming home with me, also. Oh, no. You can't do this to me. Did it to yourself. Oh. Think yourself lucky, Jeffrey. I wanted to kill you. <laughs> Come on. No! 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 Safe no. journey. Bye bye. <laughs> Put an ad on the internet last night. Bridge builders seek new challenges, travel no object. <laughs> hey, I wonder where the Tain Bridge would look good. Pretty good where it is. Aye. Mind you, after we've paid off all the costs and the chopping hose are taking their work, we're not exactly going to be millionaires, are we? Well, better off than what we were. I mean, we'll still get a drink with it at the end of the day. I mean, we went into it, lying in our pockets. 
turn things around might have killed him, but well, in the end, it wasn't about the money. Got a little present for you. There you are. Keep surfing the internet, right? Because you never know what you might find. Thanks, That's a pleasure. Ah, be happy, Bob. Oh. And well, why well, both now? Safe journey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there was a leader of the Hopis named the Sun Chief. He left his tribe in Arizona to be schooled by the white man. He said he learned how to sleep on a bed, pray to Jesus, and eat with a knife and fork. He said he also learned that the white man thinks with his head, not his heart. If the Sun Chief had met you guys, he'd realize how wrong he was. From the voice and guitar of Dire Straits, this is Mark Knopfler. The Rack Picker's Dream, 12 brilliant new tracks featuring the single Why I Man. A bonus limited edition live CD includes Brothers in Arms, Sailing to Philadelphia and more. Mark Knopfler, The Rack Picker's Dream, his excellent new album.